Hi, in this video we'll be determining the number of plates required in a distillation column for feed at the simplest case, uh, which is a good starting point to learn how to determine the number of plates. The simplest case is feed at bubble point. That means it is at the verge of vaporization and at the verge of condensation. But before we can determine the number of plates in the distillation column, we first need to construct the equilibrium curve or the y-x curve. To do that, we need values of x-a and y-a. So in this table, it gives us this x-a and y-a value, but we must also learn how to calculate these values from real data, which is this. So in this example, we're supposed to calculate the vapor and liquid composition uh, given at 92 degrees Celsius for the benzene toluene system using the atmospheric vapor pressure or a total pressure of 101.32 kilopascal. How do we calculate Xa? What is the equation to calculate Xa? So we know from Raoult's law for, let's say, the component A, or in this case benzene, Pa is equals to Xa, Pa0, mole fraction of benzene multiplied by the partial pressure of benzene at pure conditions. So that means if you want to calculate Xa, it is just simply Pa divided by Pa0. But because there's also the partial pressure of toluene, or B in this case, we need to deduct that from this partial pressure to get a lower partial pressure for Xa. So which means that to calculate Xa from these values, it's not just a matter of partial pressure of A uh, in a mixture divided by partial pressure of A at pure conditions. It is something like this. So total pressure minus Pb. The total pressure minus the partial pressure of toluene is the partial pressure of benzene or Pa divide by Pa naught minus Pb naught because there is the other component in the gas mixture. So to calculate Xa, you need to know the total pressure minus the partial pressure of the other component divide by the pure partial pressure of benzene minus the pure partial pressure of toluene. To calculate Ya, it is simply the mole fraction of A in liquid form multiplied by the partial pressure of A pure divided by the total pressure. So using this two equation, we'll be able to calculate Xa and Ya from the partial pressure values of A and B given in the table at different temperatures. To calculate Xa, which is a mole fraction, it's just equals to the partial pressure of uh, benzene. Let's say we use this as an example. Xa at this temperature, 378.2 Kelvin, is equals to the total pressure, 101.325, minus the partial pressure of benzene at the same temperature, which is 86. And we divide it by the partial pressure of A, which is 204.2, minus the partial pressure of B or toluene, 86.0, which would give us approximately 0 0.13, which is this one. And to calculate Ya, it's just the pure partial pressure of A, which is 204.2 times Xa, 0 0.13, divided by the total pressure, 101.325, which will give us 0 0.261, this one. This is an example that uses the previous equilibrium curve to determine the number of ideal plates in a distillation column. To go through the example, it is a continuous fractionating column is to be designed to separate 30,000 kilograms per hour of a mixture of 40 weight percent benzene and 60 weight percent toluene. This is weight percent, not mole percent, so we have to convert this from weight percent to mole percent into an overhead product or D containing 97% benzene and a bottom product containing 98% toluene. A reflux ratio of 3.5 moles to 1 mole of product is to be used, so which means that R is 3.5. The molar latent heats of benzene and toluene are given as so. We would need to use this to calculate Q values. The relative volatility of the benzene toluene system is about 2.5. This is if you want to construct the equilibrium curve using this relative volatility method talked about in the previous videos. And that's it. So from these values, we need to come up with the XF value, the XD value, and the XB. So this first question here is to calculate XB and XD as well as XF. And the following question is to actually determine the number of plates. To calculate XF, because just now it was uh, weight percent, so we need to convert this to mole percent using a basis of 100 kilograms. 40 weight percent of 100 kilograms for benzene is 40, so 40 divided by the molecular weight 78. Divided by the total, 40 divided by 78, this is the moles of benzene plus the moles of toluene. The moles of benzene divided by the total moles 
is equals to 0.44 so the xf is this now xd 97 percent we use a basis of 100 kilograms so 97 kilograms so 97 divided by 78 we will get about 0.974 here just like this calculation here and for xb we get 0.0235 to draw the rectifying line the most important point is this xd value here and also the intercept here because from the equation derived before x plus 1 r plus 1 x d this is the y intercept so we can calculate the y intercept here just by um, plugging in the values 1 divided by r is 3.5 plus 1 times x d calculated just now here 0 0.974 which would give us 0 0.216 so since we have this point here we also have this point here we can draw a line straight line and this straight line is the rectifying section we don't have to do such calculations for the stripping section because we just need to know where does the feed line meet the rectifying line and also the bottom point and just using these two points we connect it using a straight line and that's the stripping operating line now using the xa and ya values calculated before we can construct the yx equilibrium curve for the benzene toluene system first we take a normal graph paper and uh, we draw the axis this is the y a axis while well, this is the x a axis and we first uh, mark the values of x a and y a on the axis starts at 0 this is 0 0.1 0 0.2 0 0.3 and so on until 1 and also for the y-axis if you have enough space you should maximize the area on the graph paper so that the curve will be larger but in this case I would have to just use this part because that's the only thing that can fit in the the camera screen using the values calculated before if xa is 0 then ya is 0 so that's there if xa is 0 0.130 so 0 0.1 here 1 0 0.1 0 0.11 0 0.12 0 0.13 over here approximately then ya would be 0 0.261 so 261 would be somewhere here somewhere there once xa is 0 0.258, 258 is somewhere here, then ya is 0 0.456, so 456 is somewhere here. So from here, we sketch or we try to draw a curve, a smooth curve that goes through all of the points starting from zero. So what I usually do is I practice off the paper a few times before I start to draw a smooth continuous line. So that's the XY equilibrium curve for the benzene toluene system. Now we can also draw a one-to-one -one line. One-to-one -one line means from this point, 0, 0 to one-to-one -one for comparison. Now let's determine the number of plates needed for the feed that is at bubble point, which is an ideal condition, with a fraction of the liquid at 0 0.44. So let me just write down some of the some of the given values. XF is equals to 0 0.44. XD is 0 0.974. And XB is 0 0.0235. That means the mole fraction of benzene in the liquid phase is 0 0.44 and this is the entering uh, amount or the entering mole fraction into the distillation column. The mole fraction of benzene at the top where the distillate is at 0 0.974 and the mole fraction of benzene at the bottom is 0 0.0235. We need to determine the 
rectifying line first and then we can uh, then we also need to come up with the feed line and finally the stripping line uh, when I mention line it means the operating line so we start off with the top product the mole fraction of the top product of uh, the mole fraction of benzene of the top product which is at 0 0.974 so that's somewhere around here somewhere there we can just um, draw a line to mark where it's supposed to be. Now this is XD at 0 0.974. That's the point. And XB is at 0 0.02, so that's somewhere around here. And now we refer to the question and it says that the reflux ratio is reflux ratio is 3.5 and, re and remembering the rectifying operating line as y equals to r r plus 1 x plus 1 r plus 1 x d this is a straight line and uh, this is the y-intercept. The to draw a straight line, we just need to know two points. So to draw this line, we just need to know one of the point, which is this one, and the other point is the intercept. So we can easily calculate this because we have the r and we also have the xd. Now this part here is one three point five plus one multiply with xd, which is zero point nine seven four, which will give us around zero point two one. 6. So 0 0.216 is somewhere around here. And since we have two points, now we can draw the rectifying line, operating line, the feed line. So the feed line is around 0 0.440. That is somewhere around here. So let's draw a straight line. And because it has it is at bubble point, it's a vertical line from this point towards the top. Now to draw the stripping operating line we just need to know where this line intercept with the rectifying operating line and this connects to the XB point of this line. Now we connect these two points and then we'll get the stripping operating line. So now we have the rectifying operating line, the feed line, then the stripping operating line. Now we need to draw the step-like shapes in this figure to come up with a number of plates. We start off at this point. So from here, estimate a horizontal line to the equilibrium curve. And once you reach the equilibrium curve, this is the maximum where it needs to stop and this would go down to the rectifying line. And we repeat this process. Since this is still in the rectifying section, uh, we should use this rectifying line as a reference to where this vertical line would stop. Okay, now once it crosses the feed line, then it goes into the stripping section. So now we don't use the rectifying line as the reference. We go down straight to the stripping line, which is this line here. And from there, we do the same thing until the equilibrium curve. Bottom.
until it reaches a point where it crosses the bottom point. Now we can count the number of plates needed. So we count the edge of the, the triangle here. So this is plate number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, until twelve. Okay, so there's twelve plates and we disregard the last plate because that's where the reboiler is at. So the number of plates in this distillation column is 11 plates and the feed plate should be located at the fifth plate. So using this simple method, we'll be able to determine the number of plates in a distillation column given the criteria, the mole fractions of one of the components and also the reflux ratio value. That's the end of this video. Thank you, and I'll see you in the next video.